this is a story of a pot. This little pot right here, little vase, came to me and I saw it for the first time a year ago. My mother-in-law passed away and a few of her favorite belongings uh, were being sort of um, passed out amongst um, all of her children. And this came to us and I had never seen this in their house before. Uh, this was made by Mr. Much More Patient when he was in about fourth grade, fifth grade. And this is one of those little ceramic projects that you make as a kid in a school. And I actually think, I mean, it's very heavy and it's very thick. I think this is beautiful. I would buy this pot, but it means so much more because Mr. Much More Patient made this as a kid and he made it for his mom and she kept it all those years. So this is what a pot can be. But I'm gonna show you what else a pot can be. Okay, so if you haven't figured it out, we're on a little bit of a field trip. So I'm heading to Cambridge, Wisconsin to go meet up with Peter Wakefield Jackson from Wakefield Pottery. If you guys know anything about Cambridge, if you're into pottery, you've probably heard of Cambridge. Uh, but we are in a really beautiful part of the state. I don't know if you guys can see that nice little red barn behind us. Um, there's a cornfield on the other side of me. Um, the leaves on the trees are just starting to turn. I was sort of hoping this would turn into a color tour, but it's a little early for that. So that's where we're headed now to go talk to Peter. Yeah, I call it a medieval urn. It's not really um, based on any specific pot from the medieval era, but um, kind of reminds me of uh, some of those pieces that have sort of uh, uh, some of that kind of beaded texture. Yeah, I've always been very influenced by uh, historical pots, and uh, it's so, um, you know, it used to be when I was first. Um, uh, really getting started in pottery in, in college, you know, you would need to have all the right books to yeah. see what uh, what was out there that had been made. And of course, yeah. now you can do things like talk through the back room of uh, the Victorian Albert Museum online. And this one, I use a tool called a coggle or a roulette. And so it's uh, um, it's got little uh, um, uh, like half, half spheres uh, drilled into it. So um, I hold it on here and it, uh, Oh, wow. Look the, at that. That makes cool. the right texture. So this is a really old kind of tool that, uh, has been used for hundreds of years. Oh, look at that. That's amazing. And then this is one that I do a sort of a pedestal base on. So now I have to tuck it in just right. And hopefully it stays true because when you're yeah. pushing in there, it, a lot of times it can get off, off kilter if it's not uh, uniform all the way through. And then I have to come back and put handles on these um, when they're leather hard. I've, typically, pots that need handles, um, You'll be putting handles on the next day, or sometimes if it's a big pot, maybe two days later. So what do you love about making pottery? Um, I guess um, one of the things I love is um, sort of how, um, how you can make a form and, and uh, um, uh, little bits of uh, tweaking give it a different characteristic. and. The interesting thing about doing production pottery, you know, making pot after pot after pot, is that um, it becomes very satisfying, especially 
Um, I mean, it isn't for, for all potters don't want to do this, <laughs> but uh, you know, to, to end up with a whole rack of pots that are all the same height and, and width, and and uh, but you can still see uh, different variations in in how you captured the form that you wanted to get to, uh, the best in some and maybe not as well in others. So this is the big uh, gas kiln that uh, I built probably, I don't know, early 2000s. And it, we did a lot of production in it with um, uh, firing pots from Smith and & Hawken and uh, other wholesale customers. These are um, called pyrometric cones and they melt at specific temperatures. So that's sort of the guide that you have in the kiln to tell you oh, how neat. hot you got. And so this would have been a hot spot. Um, uh, this is cone 11, and that m melts at probably 23.75. Oh wow! Um, and uh, what I'm going for is cone 10, which is the one next to it, which is like 23.50. So you can see this was a hot spot. These were colder spots. So probably um, this cone 9 is maybe 2300. Then the electric kilns are um, what I do most of the fire pots in. So you can see uh, this oh, is neat. one that. Um, hasn't been unloaded yet. So does it give you a, a fair amount of satisfaction to see your work in people's gardens and oh, when you see people share stuff? Um, an amazing amount of satisfaction and you know the um, I've been really amazed uh, with the kind of the interaction and reception of things on, on Instagram that yeah. I never really found on Facebook. I don't know if they're just different animals or what but um, it seems like there's so, so much more of a garden community uh, on Instagram so yeah and it's always nice too just to you know get comments from people about um, appreciating your work and, and you know, making a, a little piece of uh, something beautiful in their lives. So it was such a treat to watch Peter work and I've been familiar with his work for a long time but I had never actually seen him working um, until I actually saw a video of him making a rhubarb forcer uh, over on uh, Laura's channel, and that's uh, How's It Growing New Jersey. Um, so I will put a link to that video below so you can see that because it's really interesting to see him make those as well. But it was really wonderful to be in his studio with him and just watching how he works. And it was just very inspirational to me to know that this pot, and this is what I brought home, this is a, a or six pound orchid bowl and it's, um, Got room in there for a few orchids. I think we'll pot that up probably in a video. Um, but it's it's a piece of art that I get to put plants in. And I think art and gardening are such a natural combination. You know, I look around and I don't think there are a lot of things in my everyday life that were made by hand and with pride specifically for a person, even if the person making it didn't know it was for that person. And so it just, brings home how special it is to have something that it's made by an artisan and whether that artisan is truly an artist who's been honing their craft for decades or it's you know a fifth grader who makes a little pot slash paperweight all of which got me very inspired and so I went to check out Skillshare and Skillshare is the sponsor of this video and they have an online library of thousands of videos to teach you how to do just about anything, including highly creative pursuits. And they've got a ton of videos on pottery. So I went over to Skillshare and I checked out this video, Ceramics at Home, and it's all about building dishes um, at home without a wheel. So you can get into ceramics and pottery um, without having to invest in all the equipment right away. Um, it's a great course. It was about half an hour taught by this great potter. Her name is Emily Reinhardt. And it was just really interesting and maybe that's something I'm going to get into because uh, winter's coming and uh, creative pursuits are good to keep us all busy and happy. So the first 1,000 people who use the special link in the description are going to get a Skillshare premium membership trial and then after that um, it's like $10 a month and you there is no no limit to what you can learn over there. So um, do check it out. 
Uh, use that link below. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And as far as Peter goes, um, Peter uh, is a one-man band uh, by choice. He used to do a lot more wholesale work and now he's really just focusing on making the pots he wants to make. So he makes the pots, he does everything from the moment that clay is taken out of the bag until the moment it gets sent off in the mail. He packs the orders himself too. So the way he's operating is that he does pre-orders and so he'll release a limited number of pots at the beginning of every month and then he'll fill those as pre-orders. You'll get them probably within the month. Um, and he does have some things in stock too, but that way he's able to uh, you know, prioritize what he's making. So anyway, make sure you check out uh, Peter's site to just see what he has going on every month. And actually I have a 10% discount code for that too. That is in the description as well. So make sure you check that out and uh, don't miss out on that deal as well. So I hope you enjoyed this little field trip. Um, I know it's a little different, but I feel like gardens and pottery go hand in hand. And especially when you've got a uh, a talented artisan who is making pots specifically for gardeners. So check that out and thanks for following along. We'll see you soon.